So uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> You're going to go walk through Puma Scam. Puma Scan. Not Puma Scam. <laughs> Puma Scam. It's not. Oh, sorry, Eric. Good. Sorry, Eric. Um, sorry. Yeah. I, and actually, before we did that, I wanted to talk about uh, static analyzers or auto automated static analyzers and kind of where they fit in the secure code review process. Um, because as much as we bag on them, right, I still have a tendency to use them for certain aspects of code review, right? Um, the one thing that I found over time is that I don't use the tools that generate tens of thousands of false positives. Um, and that's, I mean, I, I think that's poor, partially per personal preference, but over the years, I've learned that having false positives is almost as bad as having false negatives when it comes to these automated tools. Um, it, from a developer and security professional perspective, it ends up wasting our time because I'm weeding out tons and tons of false positives rather than spending time dealing with real security issues in the applications. And so the tools that I tend to focus on are those that give me actionable data and don't give me uh, like the the signal to noise ratio for uh, you know real vulnerabilities to false positives or false negatives is uh, what it, uh, now I, I can't even figure out the sentence but is high right like my signal no, uh, ratio is high so that I have something that I can actually work on and there's a couple of these new static analyzers that have come up come out over the last couple of years that help in that process right. So number one, uh, we've had Clint on a couple of times, uh, SEMGREP, right? Just the ability to, you know, distill down the code to small snippets and doing almost a, just a regular expression with some code awareness has been super helpful to identify security issues. Uh, the other one, and SEMGREP does not support .NET, right? Uh, so the other one that I've been using lately a lot has been PumaScan. I've looked at a lot of .NET and .NET Core lately, and it's been super useful. Uh, so I wanted to show that really quick, and we'll, we'll we'll get Eric on again soon. I know they've got updates and other things, um, but let me pull up. Um, yeah, I, I, just I, I load it up. Yeah. What? Just going back to what you said real quick about like uh, creating a lot of unnecessary noise. When you all were talking in Slack a couple of days ago about the smart bear recommendation to do 400 lines of code at a time uh, or an hour, sorry, 400 lines of code an hour. Some uh, one of one of the one of the the folks had said, um, sorry, I'm trying to go back up to figure out their name, but uh, Dunkey had mentioned basically that like the trick is to find out what 400 lines of code to 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 basically review. And I think that's like a good sent that's a true sentiment and kind of true with like the scanner. You have limited amount of time to do what you've got to do. And if the scanner's redirecting your attention down rabbit holes that don't make any sense, you've completely wasted that target, that 400 lines of code an hour. Yeah, this is a smart and true statement I feel like is all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yep. Um, so the code base that I pulled down, I just went into like awesome.net core projects or awesome.net projects or whatever and pulled down this mini blog. This is one that we've used in the secure code review course. Hey, can you can see my screen here? Yes, I can see it. Okay. So I pulled down uh, this mini blog. I've also got like NOP Commerce and we can look at that one if we want to as well. Um, but uh, the first thing I do is a restore. And one of the things I was excited about is the fact that PumaScan also has a VS code. Uh, plugin as opposed to just a Visual Studio plugin, right? Uh, so I've been able to scan more things even on uh, even on Mac OS as opposed to you know having to fire up VS Code in you know Windows, right? It's made things a lot easier. And you'll notice if you do, if you open up the uh, the command prompt, right? Uh, there's a Puma scan, start scan. It's just one of the extensions that you can install. You can activate a license. You can get a trial license fairly easily uh, from Puma scan, and they'll give you, I think, 15 or 30 days to play around with it and see how it actually acts. Um, but starting the scan, super simple, right? It does the analysis in the background. There's also plugins for this for CI/CD pipelines. 
but the the thing that I like about it, right, and this will just take a, you know, another 30 seconds or so, is the fact that the output is very succinct. Like it's the same sort of stuff that we look for. So it all pops up in problems just in normal output. And you'll notice here that some of this is going to be, some of these are going to be false positives. Some are going to be, you know, valid issues. There's probably, there might be some false negatives, right? Uh, but we know that. And where this fits in the secure code review pipeline is this is not the only thing that I'm doing, but it's giving me hints about what's going on. So the first thing is constants.cs. It looks like there's a password variable uh, that's being used. Uh, obviously, that's not a, a sensitive secret. In this case, um, it's just you know part of the model that's being used. All right, we can ignore that one. That's a false positive, right? But as we jump into the controllers that are there, like we always talk about identifying controllers, identifying different decorators that are doing authorization functions. And this is pulling the, those things out for me, right? I didn't have to go through and figure out that they're using this like authorized tag for, let me see if I can find one here. Yeah. So this authorized tag uh, as a decorator for functions that they want to protect, it's already figured that out. It knows about, knows that it, they should exist. It knows that these routes are there um, and it's, Anybody can uh, at, can execute this function because the authorization attribute doesn't exist. And then it's also missing anti-forgery tokens as well. So there's different issues that that are popping up from PumaScan. Um, I probably would have found this in a normal code review as it is, as I'm looking at the different controller files that are that exist and are out there. But it also gives me indicators of things that I should be looking for in other controllers as well. And so I'm finding that I'm using these like PumaScan when I'm looking at .NET applications, I'm using that sooner in my code review pipeline than I do some of those other tools that give me a ton of false positives where I'm just kind of doing a validation after the fact. I'm using this as one of the indicators of, hey, it shows me where the routes are. It shows me what sort of decorators are being used. It's informing my code review, which is awesome, right? Um, I mean, we that's could one jump of the things we, yeah, go I ahead. I mean, that because just because like that's just to give people a complete picture of the end to end review. Typically, when we talk about static analysis tools, that's at the end of the process, right? It's to you've already done like you've you've already done all the things that help you know how this application behaves, how and one of those things early on in the process and the the profile or sorry mapping part of our process is to not only identify what are the key authorization filters, but where are they applied and where are they not applied. So you do a negative search to see if like, like Seth was saying, if an authorization filter say like, you've got an administrative controller, everything in there should require administrative permissions. Maybe another control, controller inherits from that admin controller fails to apply a filter or does an exception and says these this filter doesn't have to be on these routes uh, mistakenly, whatever the case may be when those are missing, that's something we want to identify pretty early in the uh, <clears throat> process, which is interesting that this tool does that. And then that, so that can, I guess see why that would then fit earlier on into the process and not at the end of a review because you're getting that mapping and that negative search result right there. And same thing with like, you, you talked about the CSERF tokens. It's just another yep. authorization filter. Yep. Yep. And I mean, this one looks to be completely valid, right? Like you're posting to a comment, you're creating a comment, but this person is not logged into the app, into this blog, right? Um, so this is one that I actually question, hey, this is probably something that you want to take care of from a, you know, a mini blog perspective. Some of the others are like, are just lookups, right? For, you know, get requests for the categories or the actual, okay, those are, those probably should be anonymous, right? Account uh, controllers, we could jump in there as well. Okay, a login, right? That's probably okay. But some of the other things, um, right? Uh, log out. Oh, it looks like those are the only functions in there. So never mind, right? But right. I, I don't want to get too deep into that. Um, but I did want to show how easy it was to use something like PumaScan to help in that process. So good job to Eric on getting that out. It's it's actually all pretty valid when you start looking at it, like the redirects that are in there as well. Um, they're getting some encoded link that may or may not be controllable, right? 
Um, but it does look like a redirect, redirect location that's coming from the user here as well, like models.post. So, um, yeah. yeah, for all we know, that could be base 64 for like, uh, you know, normalization of the, the, the data, you know, sometimes there's weird data that gets in the URL. So people just solve that by doing the base 64 encoding to keep it all uniform. And so that the like routing mechanisms that receive requests don't, you know, hiccup and throw a fit. Yeah. Yep. But we'd have to jump into what Git encoded link actually was, right? It looks like it's under models sure. post and I, that, that's more, you know, that we, than we want to do today, but Speak for yourself. No, I'm yeah, kidding. I'm just, just a manager now. I don't get to review as much code. <laughs> anyway, go check out PumaScan. If you have more interest in it, um, we can connect you with Eric. We can have him back on the, um, yeah, on the the podcast as well. Uh, it's very interesting talking to him as he's kind of created this small utility that is super useful. So if you're doing .NET code, you should be looking at it. So, anyway, that's my plug for PumaScan. We'll stop sharing there for now.